so misty this morning. I'm making some scrambled tofu this morning, but I've got some tofu, but I kind of, oh and look, it tells you how to make garlic and cream tofu tarts. I'm going to keep that, I'm going to make that. Um, I don't actually have all the stuff we usually use for making tofu, so we are out of uh, nutritional yeast and we are also out of black salt which makes um, things taste a bit eggy anyway I've got some a little bit of olive oil in the pan and then I'm just crumbling up the tofu so when my, this is breakfast time so when we're having um, scrambled tofu for breakfast I like to keep it really simple but then sometimes we have like scrambled tofu for dinner and then um, we add lots of vegetables to it. But in the, mo in the mornings, it's kind of nice, a little bit simple. I am going to add some turmeric to make it kind of yellow. We're pretty low on turmeric as well, note to self. And then I'm going to add some mustard I don't always add mustard but seeing as I don't have nutritional yeast and um, uh, black salt I thought I would add it I'm going to add some salt And some pepper uh, maple syrup as well although I feel like any of our cooking ones now it just looks like we have put maple syrup on everything um, just a little bit but we do kind of we don't really use regular sugar so I've got maple syrup and I've got coconut sugar as well. And then also I'm going to add some soya milk. And that's going to be kind of it. So I'm hoping it's still going to be delicious. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have swaddle tofu or what, how you do it. But I think yeah, nutritional yeast would be great, but we don't have it. But I think, it, yeah, it's a really uh, bit of a staple for us. Really like it and it's a really nice breakfast so I've got to go to work today probably won't have not sure if I'll have lunch so this is going to be a nice breakfast and we'll just have it on toast so just let that cook I might add some of the by life cheese on as well which I don't usually do but um, because there's not that much else in it and I'll take you on a little uh, close-up of the scrambled tofu as well it looks Pretty good. There you go. What do you think? I just found some old photographs and um, concert tickets, and this one's today's date Friday, the 5th of December, 1997. Little Bert with his fringe went to see Blur in Cardiff International Arena. My first time in Cardiff. It was 22 years ago today. Oh. Hey. Okay. Uh, there's a horse's head, which is the Mary Lloyd. I was going to take to the hospital with me, but then I couldn't find any parking. I'm going to have to walk for 10 minutes with a fake horse's head with bells on, so he stayed here. Okay, so I've read a chunk more of um, Nightmare Blue today, um, which is quite exciting because it means I'm getting towards the end. I can maybe finish it tonight. I would like to. 
that occurred to me whilst reading it. So um, this was written in 1975. And I think in lots of ways, it's quite symptomatic of like the mood of the era it was written in. Um, I'm thinking it is like, was Watergate sort of before 1975? It was around this time, wasn't it? So it's that, definitely that sort of post Nixon era paranoia um, in, in this book. So, I mean, the story is about uh, like an alien race that infiltrates um, planet Earth and is manufacturing this kind of um, mind controlling drug, which I think was like one of the, um, I think it was like, a, it was a notion that was floating around at the time that I guess the government or like the man were um, somehow controlling the population with drugs in the water or something. It was just one of those sort of paranoid mid seventies kind of ideas that I think Often with science fiction, you can you you become quite aware of the ideas floating around in a particular era, because um, it's looking at them in this kind of theoretical way. Um, so I mean, this this book is no great shakes. It's I think like a free star read, but I am enjoying it. Um, it's also a product of its time in that, despite it dealing with all sorts of alien races and stuff like that, all the protagonists are male they've all got like female secretaries um, and it's supposedly set 100 years in the future I mean so, so I mean there's a certain amount you can put down to oh it was you know a long time ago but this is was the era of you know like feminism um, and I think that's not showing at all in this book um, so I think in a, in a lot of ways it's an interesting um, it interestingly captures that moment in time in science fiction. It's a fun read. Um, I'm enjoying it. I, I can almost sort of see it as one of those mid seventies kind of dystopian uh, movies that they made, you know, like Soylent Green and Logan's Run type things. So in that respect, it was a good find. Um, but yeah, very 1975. Hey, here's dinner. So Bert has made all of this because he's the best husband in the world. So I've got a sweet potato with some hummus, uh, some sweet corn, some broccoli and some rocket. And there's some sriracha over the top. And then I've also got one of those um, Punk AF alcohol-free IPAs. Punk AF. Yeah, which is me. Mm. And then I've also got this Starless Sea here, with this Starless Sea, which I have been just reading little bits. Um, I feel that this these blogs have shown how little I do read during the week because <laughs> I don't have that much time, even though I know that there's no such thing as no time for reading. But still anyway, enjoying it? I am enjoying it. Um, what page am I on? Page 120 of this. Mm. Um, I, I am liking it. I don't know if it's quite as good as the Night Circus. Night Circus. I'm, I don't I feel like the writing's nothing special. But I kind of feel like I just. But I'm kind of getting through it enjoyably, yeah. so I'm going to just. Like a weekend I'm just going to see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm.